Have you ever heard of the Faggot? An example of Soviet aviation prowess that sent shockwaves through the U.S. Air Force. The MiG-15, codenamed the Faggot by NATO, is the Soviet Union's first true turbojet-powered fighter design of consequence, and the first swept-wing aircraft of the Empire. The MiG-15 in combat action, particularly during the Korean War, proved more than a match for her contemporaries. However, despite its success in combat, the MiG-15 eventually faced its match with the introduction of remodeled and advanced fighter jets. Still, the legacy of the MiG-15 lives on as a symbol of Soviet aviation prowess and Cold War air attentions. Want to know more about this unique Soviet fighter aircraft? Join us as we delve into the untold story of the iconic MiG-15, the Aluminum Falcon. The MiG-15 was the first all-new Soviet jet aircraft, one whose design did not simply add a jet engine onto an older piston engine airframe. Russian designer Mikoyan Gurevich created the MiG-15 in 1946, with its first flight conducted in December of 1947. Although it was Russia's first all-new aircraft, its first known appearance challenged the United States' air superiority. The fighter jet initially surprised the U.S. military with its speed and climb rate. The MiG-15 was so effective that it caused the U.S. to expedite the delivery of the F-86 Sabre in order to reclaim its air dominance. Some healthy competition? Not during this time in history. The MiG-15 came to be as a response to Russia's desire for an aircraft that could combat the devastating bombings by the massive but sluggish B-29s. It all started on the morning of November 30, 1950, when the U.S. Air Force B-29 Superfortress attacked an airbase in North Korea. It was slightly damaged by a fighter that overtook the bomber. The fighter was too fast for the attacker to be identified, much less for the Superfort's gunner to fix it in the sights of his gun's tracking system. Straight-wing Lockheed F-80 jets escorting the bomber made a token pursuit, but the accelerating fighter rapidly shrank to a dot and disappeared. The bomber crew's report sparked an organized panic that sizzled through the U.S. chain of command. Although the airman's description of the intruder matched no aircraft known to be operating in the theater, U.S. intelligence officials quickly made an educated assumption. The attacking aircraft was a MiG-15, most likely flying from a base in Manchuria. Before the incident, analysts believed that the only use Mikhail Tarasov, then chairman of the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet of the Russian SFSR, had authorized for MiGs supporting Communist China's Air Force, was protecting Shanghai from attack by nationalist Chinese bombers. The MiG was an ominous sign. China's involvement in Korea was increasing, and Soviet technology was spreading. Over 12,000 MiG-15s were produced and flown in over 30 countries. They were used by China for more than two decades after the Korean War ended and are still flown today in air shows. However, with World War II delaying turbojet design in the Soviet Union, engineers instead looked to capture German scientists and their groundbreaking aircraft designs. They secured an agreement with Britain to license and produce the Rolls-Royce Nena turbojet engine. They manufactured a fighter that fit the Soviet Empire's need for a powerful, effective, easy-to-produce and maintain jet fighter. As progress on turbojet-powered fighters was steadily made in the West, the inevitable requirement for a similar Soviet system eventually came down. This new requirement specified an aircraft design capable of 621 miles per hour with a good rate of climb a range of 745 miles, and restricted landing and takeoff distances. The proposition of the new design was based on ease of production and maintenance to ensure it could stay in the fight as long as necessary without taking the owners to the bank. Additionally, this aircraft was to be appropriately armed and offer up much internally in the way of its Western counterparts to not put the Soviet pilot at a disadvantage when they inevitably should meet one another. Taking a look at the MiG-15's engine. Officially, the VK-1 turbojet was assigned to power the MiG-15. However, the VK-1 was little more than a direct imitation of the Rolls-Royce Nena. In 1948, the British government agreed to broker several Rolls-Royce Nena turbojets to the Soviet Union to be used strictly in non-combat situations. The Soviet manufacturer Klimov reverse-engineered the engine and added a few original Soviet touches, thus creating the VK-1, 
an all-new Russian jet engine for its first fighter jet. The VK-1, a centrifugal flow engine, developed 5,952 pounds of thrust. The differences between the Nena and the VK-1 were less about design and more about size. The VK-1 created larger combustion chambers, more giant turbines, and increased airflow. Rolls-Royce demanded restitution from the Soviets for licensing fees, but was ultimately unsuccessful. Now let's discuss the MiG-15's armament. The MiG-15 was designed with bombers in mind. The weaponry outfitted on the plane was meant almost exclusively for B-29s. The MiG-15 had two Noodleman Saranov 23mm cannons and one Noodleman 37mm cannon. Combined with unexpected speed and maneuverability, these intimidating weapons effectively chased out all piston engine aircraft during the war. The F-80 and F-84 were still not much of a match for the MiG-15. However, because of structural issues, the MiG-15 was not a good gun platform. The fighter had a problem with Dutch rolling because of wing flexing during high speeds. The MiG-15's ejection seat was a trailblazer. It was the first Soviet aircraft to feature an ejection seat. With its high-powered jet engine, the speed the MiG-15 rendered any manual attempts at ejection completely worthless. The pilot's parachute doubled as the seat cushion above the ejection pan. Once detonated, explosive cartridges under the seat pan provided enough lift for the pilot to be lifted over the vertical tail surface, a huge feat at this time in history. So where did the codename Faggot come from? After several successful trial results, the MiG-15 was officially written into the Soviet Air Service on December 23, 1948. A short time later, news of the fighter had reached the West with little interest or overall technical knowledge of the aircraft. However, this all changed with the arrival of the Korean War. NATO designation conventions officially afforded the aircraft the codename of Falcon. This was subsequently changed to the more identifiable, albeit derogatory, codename of Faggot, meaning a hastily bundled pile of sticks, to belittle the arrival of this fine Soviet development. The first production aircraft were simply designated as MiG-15 Faggot A to NATO and as Izdalai SV internally to Mikoyan Gurevich. It became operational in 1949, even as testing of the type itself continued. The second production aircraft became the MiG-15 Biz, Faggot B. These systems were fitted with the VK-1 turbojet engine. The development of this Klimov power plant effectively allowed for a complete rewrite of the base MiG-15 model. The MiG-15 BIS is a highly improved model. The new aircraft was now a power player and would become a stalwart of the Soviet Air Force and associated with bloc nations. Bloc nations were a group of Eastern European countries that were aligned militarily, politically, economically, and culturally with the Soviet Union from approximately 1945 to 1990. Members included Albania, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, East Germany, Hungary, Poland, Romania, and Yugoslavia. Visually, the base MiG-15 and the MiG-15 Biz differed little externally, but internally, the MiG-15 Biz held the edge thanks to the myriad of improvements afforded to the model. The MiG-15 Biz Faggot B branched out into a dedicated fighter-bomber design. This move was necessitated by the fact that the Soviet Air Force had no real fighter-bomber platforms to support ground operations. As such, the MiG-15 Biz, a dogfighting jet-powered fighter by design, was selected for the conversion program. These systems had pylons added underway, outboard of the main landing gear for use with drop bombs and rocket pods. Though the project was successful, the MiG-15 was not born for the role. The aircraft was limited in the amount of external ordnance it could mount under its wings, and the airframe itself was not built for the rigors and enemy action of low-level flight. The pilot was offered next to no armor protection at these low altitudes. Essentially, the basic bulletproof windshield was all he had as a form of protection. A dozen developmental MiG-15 Biz ISH models attempted to address these shortcomings, though these never entered production status. Taking a look at the UTI MiG-15, or better known as the MiG-15 UTI, NATO's codename for this version was Midget. It is a two-seater conversion trainer that impressively produced more significantly than the single-seat tactical fighter version. This model saw tandem seating for an instructor at the rear and a student trainee in the forward cockpit. As expected, the tandem seat cockpit compromised most of the forward fuselage area. 
and featured a single-piece multi-framed canopy. The rear canopy was of a sliding type, sliding aft for entry, while the forward canopy opened on hinges aligned to the starboard side. As such, entry was exclusively made from the port side. Also, the trainer variant appeared with the internal prototype model designation of I-312. It differed little in visual appearance and performance from her single-seat counterpart, apart from the dual cockpit positions. MiG-15 UTI trainers rolled off the assembly lines by June of 1949. The UTI MiG-15P became the trainer version of the Interceptor model. The MiG-15 Biz P, or SP-1, was an experimental interceptor. This model featured a cone fairing over the top portion of the forward intake, containing the radar assembly appearing as a type of visible nose. Surprisingly, the aircraft's performance was not degraded substantially with this addition, but it necessitated the relocation of the S-13 gun camera to the right side of the fuselage. Weight was increased with the addition of the cone arrangement and its applicable equipment, so the twin 23mm cannons along the port side of the gun tray were removed to compensate, leaving the single 37mm gun mounting in place as the sole armament for the aircraft. A limited production run superseded these development aircraft as converted Faggot A models. A handful of Faggot B new build production models followed these. The MiG-15M became a target drone. These drones were made up of used MiG-15 models with their ejection seat systems replaced with remote control equipment. Since these were heavily used MiG-15 airframes with plenty of airborne models, there was no loss in exposing them to gunnery training or other developmental testing. Like most early jet-powered fighters, the MiG-15 Biz was also featured in a parasite fighter program. This theoretical combat approach to solving the need for long-range escort fighters for bomber groups featured a bomber mothership with a fighter slung underneath, akin to a pilot fish along the underside of a great white shark. When contact with the enemy was suspected, the fighter could be released from the bomber's grip to defend the aircraft from enemy attack. In various ways imaginable, the fighter was somehow retrieved by the mothership, and both systems returned to their home base. In the case of the MiG-15 Biz trial, the two aircraft, fighter and bomber, would have met in the air after takeoff, with the fighter connecting to a drag tow table released by the bomber. The fighter could power down the engine and settle in for the flight ahead. At the first sign of the enemy, he would disconnect from the bomber's rear, fight as usual, and eventually return to the drag cable system. The fighter could be made ready to fight multiple times if need be. Yakovlev developed the system, which was tried using a Tupolev Tu-4 bomber. Like most other parasite fighter ideas, this Soviet parasite project went nowhere and was eventually abandoned. As may be expected, the production of the MiG-15 in any form was not a sole Soviet venture. Czechoslovakia produced the MiG-15 under the S-102 MiG-15 Faggot A tactical fighters and S-103 MiG-15 Biz Faggot B tactical fighters designations. These were fitted with licensed production engines under the designation of M-05, trainers, noted by their CS designations in the CS-102. A fighter-bomber model with six hardpoints was constructed as the MiG-15 SB. The six hardpoints, leading to an increase in takeoff weight, forced rocket-assisted takeoffs. A similar MiG-15 Biz Faggot B fighter bomber model was also produced. These as MiG-15 Biz SBs. Reconnaissance models were noted by using an R in their designations, as in MiG-15 Biz R. Similarly, Poland had the type under LIM-1 Faggot A and LIM-2 Faggot B. Reconnaissance aircraft were noted by the R placed in their designations, as in LIM-2R. Trainer models, UTI MiG-15 Midget, were designated as SB LIM-1 and SB LIM-2. China received tremendous assistance in the Cold War in its attempt to field a more modern military. The Soviet Union exported the MiG-15 extensively abroad, including China. The Korean War broke out. MiG-15 controlled by Chinese and Korean pilots began to appear on the battlefield. As such, the MiG-15 was initially selected for license production on Chinese soil. By this time, however, the improved and more modern MiG-17 Fresco had already become available. It was actually in development as the MiG-15 was hitting the front lines, which China selected for inclusion in its new modernizing air force. It should be noted that Chinese airmen had already received a good amount of experience in flying MiG-15s during the Korean War 
and Chinese factories had garnered expertise in repairing the type for some time, improving over 500 of the aircraft. In fact, this resulted in airmen and mechanics somewhat familiar with the aircraft. These MiG-15s received the Chinese designation of Jian-2 or J-2. The midget trainer model also appeared in Chinese inventories as Junjiao-2 or JJ-2. These were completed with locally produced versions of the RD-45F Nena-2 turbojet engines in the Wolpen 5 series. China eventually exported MiG-15s to various nations, with F-2 as the export designation for the fighter types and FT-2 as the export designation for the trainer types. Despite the Chinese exposure to MiG-15s inside and out, no single-seat fighter versions were licensed produced on Chinese soil. American historians calculate that 222 F-86 Sabre fighters and 566 MiG-15 fighters were destroyed in intense air battles on the Korean battlefield. Impressed by the MiG-15 and the desire to explore this fighter, the U.S. promised to pay $100,000 to any Korean pilot who escaped with the plane. In the end, the United States was also satisfied when North Korean Air Force Lieutenant No Kum Sok flew a MiG-15 landing at South Korea's Kimpo Airport on October 21, 1953. After the Korean War, the MiG-15s became antiquated and were replaced by MiG-17 fighters. There were more than 18,000 MiG-15 fighters built, and they served in the Air Force of more than 40 countries worldwide. This wraps up our exciting journey on the iconic MiG-15, the Aluminum Falcon. What do you think of the several reformations of this aircraft? How do you think this aircraft changed aviation warfare? Let us know in the comments, and if you learned anything new from our video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. We will see you on the next one, friends.